Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Articulate with Steve McJones. Hey, what's up? It's me. How's it going? Uh, this week, a man who needs no introduction, but I'll give him a little bit of introduction. Felix Bear. What can you say about this guy? Um, I'll tell you, he does not give a shit about anything. That is 100% honest. And he is... I respect that. Like, as a comic, if you can do what Felix does uh, and go out to open mics and do... Your own style, even if it may not always fit completely, you know, like, he still does it. And I, like I said, it's very respectable. He's also just, like, a a very well-read and uh, attentive person. Like, he listens. Uh, And he has a very specific image of how he wants to be perceived. Uh, And again, does not give a shit and won't let anybody tell him otherwise. And again, I, and I just find that very respectable. Um, and I think we all wanted to know if he was British or not. So that's really the main reason <laughs> I had him out here. But also, Felix, great dude. Love seeing you out. And um, yeah, I, uh, I hope you like this episode. So please uh, strap in and enjoy. Get like, acclimated and, and you know, have people know you. Uh, so uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, Felix Baird. How you doing, Felix? All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, so Felix, I think a lot of people have this question that I just need to start out with. Are you British? No. No, not at all. (laughs) Technically, yeah. Technically. All right, so give us a rundown of your background a little bit. I was born in the UK. Uh, We moved here in the 90s. UK is a pretty big place. I was born in Bristol. Bristol, okay, cool. Um, Which, if you have a mental map, is sort of southwest, bordering Wales. Gotcha. Wales is the pustule. Bit above the toe. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I only know Wales because of uh, Alex Turner's from there. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is he? Uh, I'm from Sheffield. Oh, you're right. You're right. No, he's from Sheffield. But maybe I'm thinking of Submarine, the movie that Submarine he is in Wales. Yeah. In Wales, okay, I'm yeah, quite sure. that's definitely it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Bristol, and how long did you live there for? Six months. Six months as a baby, and then six months after college. Oh, uh, okay. So you went back. But we'll, we'll go, you're jumping ahead there. So yeah. six months in, right? And then you moved over into... Yonkers, New York. Really? Yeah. Is that like suburban area? Um, Yeah, it's in Westchester County, but it's poor Westchester County. Okay. Except yeah. that's in the rich part of poor Westchester County. Nice, nice. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, how was growing up around there? Well, I grew up on a seminary, so I was very divorced from it. It was, uh, what area? A seminary. Um, oh, a seminary. Yeah. Oh, That's right. why we were in the States. Interesting. How, how was that? What was that like? Uh, what was it like a daily... Well, I went, to, I went to school like a normal person, but yeah. lots of people in robes and church bells all the time. Yeah. Lots of church. Um, at least three hours a week a lot of time. Nice. Okay. Are you still religious? Uh, I think it's by... Well, I, I have a religious point of view regardless of what I believe or not. Fair enough. Like, it's sort of imprinted. Yeah, I could see that. Because I grew up Catholic, and it's yeah. like... Um, I mean, I've been reading Alan Watts. I don't know if yeah. you know him or oh, not yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, but he is very, you know, like, open-minded about religion and everything. And so I try to be, like, <clears throat> you know... I feel like religions... All religions are, like, looking at... Trying to achieve the same thing, um, but, like, coming at it in different ways. Yeah. So, uh, at least, you know, on a very, very <laughs> different... Like, high level. But... Um, but, like, I feel like with me, since I have a Catholic background, it's easier for me to, you know, imagine it or actually, you know, put it into physical thinking, metaphysical thinking, yeah. Well, it's a cultural language mm-hmm. that you, it sort of forms a baseline grammar of how you think about exactly. questions like eternity or whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it makes it a little bit more real for me, but I don't want to get too too deep into that. <laughs> no, but I didn't know that was your background. How long did you live in the seminary for? 24 years 24 years in a seminary yeah well that's, that's awesome. where my par- that's where we worked yeah true true they, your parents did no my father did and um, they had a deal to move whatever the first one got a job okay and my father got the job to my mother's surprise <laughs> oh nice <laughs> so what did he do there Just... he taught um early church theology really like from the first through the third century 
Really? Yeah. That's so cool, actually. I've never, like, met anybody's parents who have been, you know, seminary. What is the title, technically? Uh, he was a professor of patristics. And now, but he's moved to Aberdeen now. Okay. Where he's a Regis professor of theology or something. Nice. Okay, cool. And so, I mean, you lived in the seminary until you were 24. How... Yeah, I went to college and stuff in between, but yeah. my home address was there. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. How was, uh, what was high school like for you? Yeah. I went to a Jesuit high school, so that wasn't too difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it, actually. Yeah? Yeah. You find a little group? Did you do anything? Like, what would you do? In... Actually, I was a loser who spent his lunches in the library reading biographies yeah. and doing art. <laughs> it's weird. I'm reading, again, that Alan Watts, like, biography now yeah. at this point. Biog- he's... I like biographies. They end in death. <laughs> true, true. That's an autobiography. My bad. Okay. My bad, yeah. <laughs> but, but you must have read quite a bit of biographies. That's... Well, quite a few. Yeah, I got into Oscar Wilde at the time. Oscar Wilde. Okay. And so that's probably where a lot of your... Um, Influence for your style comes from it? Um, a bit. Actually, it goes back earlier. Oh, yeah. uh, being in the seminary is part why I'm very British because we didn't have... All my influences were very much my parents. Okay. So it's all like 1970s, 80s yeah. British stuff. Yeah. So my early influence would be like Terry Pratchett and The Young Ones and early British punk. And gotcha. then that moved to Oscar Wilde because he's like uh, more elevated Terry Pratchett. <laughs> yeah, I um, this so yeah, so I guess your interest in arts is it? Did it start with comedy or did it start with like um, music? I mean, seminaries obviously there's a lot of singing in church. I don't know if that there is a performance aspect to it. Oh, it's sure. very theatrical. Yeah, it's very very theatrical. I, it's also Orthodox Christianity, which is why I have such a garish style. Yeah. Kind of thing. <laughs> I think that there's always been an artsy edge. Comedy and music sort of came at different points, but okay. those both were very punk influences. Yeah. That was my early interest. Yeah, so I mean, guess I just like art and creativity in general. When did you see that within yourself? Um, it's always been there, uh, even when I was younger, because foundational memories are like doing speech therapy and having to do stories to do speech therapy. Gotcha. And writing terrible books when I was like five. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Actually, there's this uh, podcast episode, and I found a story that I wrote in like second grade, yeah. and it's just like me. It's just like an ongoing one run-on sentence <laughs> about like a bad guy. Like it's a group, it's a team. You know, it's like yeah. an Avengers type with cooler. You know, they're like dogs, and like uh, they have way cooler superpowers, and they're all based off of like my schoolmates and everything. Uh, <laughs> But, and then just, like, another bad guy would come. But, I mean, it's still, like, I mean, I was trying, you know yeah, what I mean? It was, like, trying. Yeah, so did you start out writing, like, what type of stories were you writing when you were young? Oh, terrible rip-offs of Pokemon, I think. <laughs> really? I remember that. I also created a monster called Crash Mouth because his mouth would crash. Crash Mouth? Yeah. Like, All-Star? <laughs> uh, actually, no, I didn't know about the band at the time. <laughs> I was again. I was. Com- they ripped off of you. Yeah, you definitely. Need a suit. <laughs> no, I was completely divorced from a lot of pop culture. Oh wow! I didn't realize Oprah was a real person until I was thirteen. She is a real person. I know. No, I <laughs> and I learned that Madonna was older than Britney Spears when I was twenty-five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, so yeah, I guess was um, w- within the seminary. How much access? Like, did they? I mean- oh, there's access because we got like graduate students. Mm-hmm. I'm awesome that my parents were like restrictive again they sh- it's the kind of back room where i would read the bible for my jesuit high school then listen to the sex pistols and, not, <laughs> and i wouldn't see a contradiction like it's, so it's like okay yeah yeah um so it's it all there mm-hmm. it's just more i i guess i just gravitate to the english stuff because that was like home mm. culture stuff and then like it was weird Bush America out there. Yeah. I like, walk go to school, you'd pass like 13 American flags mm-hmm. and that kind of thing's like, oh, yeah. that, that's not my flag. Is it? <laughs> well, that's interesting. So I guess your parents must have instilled your British culture very deeply like, within you. Um, a mixture. Of, they did and I sort of did that out of perversity, I think. Because right. my brother and sister are more American than I am. Oh, really? Are they older? Or? No, they're younger. Oh, okay. 
So maybe it's also my parents just acclimatized by the time they were born. True. Because I was the first one. Yeah, and I mean, I can imagine, you know, growing up. I mean, even just in general, I was like a rebellious guy mm-hmm. and like didn't want to associate with my Ohio brethren. <laughs> yeah. And so like I can imagine, you know, knowing that you're mainly British or that you come from the UK and you're like, I, I want to associate more with that too. It's kind of interesting. I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm not anywhere near you, but like growing up, I always like uh, enjoyed, you know, British bands and uh, culture movies that were, you know, actors uh, that were bigger in the UK, um, things like that. Like like Harry Potter, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's fun. Um, so yeah, I guess when did the stories, you know, were you writing and kind of thinking about performance? No, I always want I always liked writing. Mm-hmm. It was always bit of a writer. Comedy happened more randomly. Um, I was trying to write a book like over quarantine Mm. and I stayed with myself so it turned into a horrible (laughs) avant-garde piece of shit. (laughs) And then other stuff was happening and then uh, so I was in a very bad place and then Sean Locke died uh, who's a comedian and he died in August I thought. Mm -hmm. I guess the idea got launched in my head of like you could just do comedy and I thought fuck it I'll do comedy because everything else is going badly oh man yeah um but even the writing always had a comedic edge just I never thought that my sense of humor would work well in stand-up yeah yeah because Which... again like lots of stand-up has a very kind of rigid idea of what comedy should be mm-hmm. yeah and we were just talking about this so like open mics around here you know it, it's maybe there, there is is a, a fairly um, locked in. I don't, I don't even know how to. Well, it's like it's a bunch of people who like comedy, spend their time thinking about comedy, doing comedy. So they're the most dogmatic people about what comedy should be. Right, right, and and a lot of the, I mean, open. I mean, they're, they're they're not like mean about it. It's just if you think about something for so long, you're gonna have a. Yeah, sure. you about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Whereas the comedians I liked tend to be more like alternative British comics in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, which is interesting. And Rob Newhart, Bob Newhart. Okay, because I grew up with that. Yeah, yeah, and so I mean, with those influences, I mean, you just there's not just because. Do you, do you think if you went to the UK, you could probably find more of? Uh, yeah, I think my comedy would be very different because I don't have to explain being English all the time. True. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> Um, but I think I'd be very different if I grew up there. Yeah. Because I think, sort of, the rebelliousness we were talking about, I sort of try and bring onto stage of a kind of, not antagonistic, but standoffishness against the audience of I am who I am. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And I wouldn't have to do that as much. Hmm. Yeah. If yeah. I grew up in a similar culture. You could kind of just lean into more of your own internal rebellious nature as Yeah, or I could do more of the silly, surreal stuff and people might be more into that. True, true. What, so what drew you uh, to... I mean, was there anything specific that you recall like when you were diving into the literature and uh, other culture that you know brought about the rebellious feelings or, or why you liked the punk rock nature of, of things? Um, that's just... Well, first, I think there's like a few things there. It's like comedy, like my foundational comic memory, is watching the young ones. They were a sitcom in the mid '80s, I think. Okay. And my father was like 20 then, so you know when I was 10, it was on PBS. It's like you have to watch this. Yeah. Which looking back now, like I don't know why he showed it to a 10 year old, <laughs> but it was a alternative co- sitcom. And it had this kind of punk rock energy to it. It's also where I first saw Dexter's Midnight Runner. Oh. Right, it's because they're in the bathroom performing, Jackie Wilson said. Oh, nice. Anyway, the plot of the episode is Atom Bomb falls into their house <laughs> and doesn't explode. And they have different reactions yeah. to it. Like, one's tried to sell it, one's tried to threaten Thatcher, one's trying to blow it up, and another's building a bomb shelter. Yeah. And there's a bit where, like, one who's worried about is painting himself white, and it's like, look at you, racist, even in death. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah, so a like, ten year old. Perfect for a ten year old. Oh yeah, perfect for a ten year old. <laughs> like it's kind of punk rock energy to that. Yeah. Which yeah. I appreciated. And then the punk rock music was just very exciting. Yeah. And very grounded in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting costumes usually. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's sort of led to, like, David Bowie and other stuff. Yeah, definitely. So is that where, again, I mean, talking about your style, too, we have to address it. Like, <laughs> is that where a lot of that came, came from, too? It's amazing. Um, yeah, I guess so. Like, the shirts, actually, start of the shirts going to Jesuit school because you had to wear a uniform. Right. And so I decided to be a dandy because I was like, I will dress to uniform, but I'll take it to yeah. a silly extreme. So I'd wear suspenders and floral shirts. <laughs> nice. So the, the style was a bit of a fuck you. I well, guess. it's almost yeah, a rebellious thing again, too. And then at some point, you just kind of it just kind of took over. I, that, I guess that's just my attitude in many things. Yeah. I wore the Pip Pip Cheerio sign. Yeah. <laughs> that's to, hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess, uh, yeah, with that, um, but yeah, I mean, did you ever do any like official writing or it was just kind of all things you I had a magazine I used to work with, which went under during quarantine. Oh, sorry. Yeah, what, what articles did you write for it? I'd interviewed a few people like, um, astrophysicists and protesters. They did like in- strange changes at intersection of science, culture, and technology. I was in Denmark for a while and then I'm. What oh, was that, the six months? Yeah, I was six months in Denmark, and I was still doing it when I moved to Philly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, what was the the magazine in general? How'd you get into that? Uh, I don't remember how I applied to it. I just got it, asked if I wanted to interview and moved to Copenhagen if nice. I got it. I said, okay, I have no jobs in Bristol, yeah. so I'll move to Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you like Denmark during your, like, six months? I liked it all. Yeah, it's too expensive, but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Like, culture-wise, it was... Uh, Pretty nice. Um, it's nice if you're Danish. If you're Danish. <laughs> well, it's, all the welfare systems are very made to be for people who fit within the culture of the welfare system. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. Do you think America should do that? Um, I think America could do some more welfare, but I don't <laughs> know if they do a good job at instilling such a idea of being Danish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, okay, but yeah, and then you came back and took that job here, and that definitely, I feel like just writing, starting writing in general, even if it's for a job or something, just, that just gets your, your brain going, you know, the wheels oh, turning. Yeah. And so, I mean, did that, um, you probably put a lot of, like, wit and, and, uh, interesting vocabulary into those articles, um, too. Yeah, but, and, uh, I've gotten more used to just churning out stuff over the years, true, but. True. Did you have a favorite person you interviewed? Um, I interviewed the astrophysicist who did the science behind the black hole interstellar really yeah we got we almost got lost on an aisle in sweden what how did that what because he wanted to go to visit a the remains of an observatory from a renaissance danish astronomer but there's only one ferry there and back but we didn't know about that <laughs> And we were taking a kind of circumnavigation of the island, because it's a small island. Mm-hmm. And we had to sort of break into a Swedish farm to get to the ferry back on time. How did you broke it to it? You just, like, went around the back or whatever? But, yeah, we had to sneak through the cow fields. The cows were <laughs> impressed with us. <laughs> that sounds like a good-ass time, honestly. Yeah, it was a great time. I had a good time writing the article. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did he tell you anything interesting that you wrote about? Um... I most, mostly wrote back, he's the kind of person whose brain jumps around. I just thought it was interesting that he could, he basically drew what the um, black hole light effect was mm-hmm. with ink in the 70s before oh, the computer really? imagery, because he did based on calculations. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So he's just an interesting guy. There's a lot of creativity that goes into that, even, you know? What I mean? Oh, yeah, he was, because he also worked with composers and wrote books. Oh, really? Yeah. He yeah. jumps them around a lot. He still uh, talk to him at all? Not really, but it was a good time. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, when did you decide to take the the class? Because that was the start. About of August. Right? About August when uh, who died? Sean Locke. I wasn't even a big Sean Locke fan. It's more of the I. I think I just saw the word comedian, and I was just in the kind of place of what am I doing with my life? No one reads books. Why am I trying to write a book? Yeah, yeah. And I sort of incepted myself. Yeah, insane. <laughs> You had to? Um, it's been like I had to. It's just like it's a way forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just another uh, stepping stone. Yeah, right? and I'm happy I did it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it. you know, you you did the class and that was, what, that was what, five classes, six classes? Yeah, it's in September through October, mid-October. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we did that together and yeah, you must have uh, liked it a lot, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not a performing person, but I enjoy doing it. 
Yeah, yeah, and then well, and that's the thing is like you've still come out since then. That's what September, remember six, six months now. Six months now, man. Like that's not nothing, you know. Yeah. Dell of all the open mic shit. Yeah. <laughs> Dell of having to win over Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, the entirety of Philadelphia. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like. A... <laughs> yeah, it really does for sure. Um, yeah, so I mean, I know you said you. Um, I mean, this, I don't know where the swords come in, but I just like... Oh, yeah, I've got swords. Yeah. How many swords, by the way? Um, well, they're fencing swords. I've got four. Well, one's broken, so three. Mm. They're, do you actually fence? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, well it's like historical fencing, mm. which is different from lapping. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, we do longsword fencing based off Italian manuscripts. It's called historical European martial arts. Really? Yeah. When? How often do you do that? Um... Usually once a week, unless I'm going to an open mic. Yeah, definitely. I didn't even know that that was a thing still around here. Um, yeah, it's a, we do a must fill. Okay, so is there like, um, I mean, how do they train you with that? We just do drills based off interpretations of the manuscript, oh. and then we just fence. Wow. We're heavy gear. Mm. Hope we don't hurt each other, usually. <laughs> That's so cool. I didn't know you do that. That's uh, w- sad. <laughs> That's really interesting. So how many different styles? Because as you said, it's Italian, right? Yeah, so it's two, well, it's three sort of general styles. Two major ones are Italian and German, and in those there are a few other styles. Mm-hmm. So I sort of do the OG Italian style, nice. which has pictures of people getting kicked in the crotch and <laughs> having their face smashed in by the pommel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a writer Fiore going... I have knocked out many teeth this way. It's a gangster, though. Yeah, it is a little bit. That's what I'm saying. I oh, I yeah. Could... It's like if you could stand in front of someone who's got three feet of metal. Well, more usually. Yeah. I've got a new one, which is like four and a half feet, but like three feet of metal who's going to try hitting with you. At a... You could stand in front of an audience at comedy in just complete silence. Yeah. And like, this isn't that bad. This isn't that bad. <laughs> you have to assert dominance over fencing you have to sit dominance of the audience and they respect that oh yeah so you find a lot of similarities between the two um at least self-confidence yeah well definitely that that, that definitely plays into it i mean the, and the fencing is a form of art obviously oh, like yeah. you said of martial arts which is really cool i still do that in a strange way too i manage it somehow oh really oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't do it properly oh yeah <laughs> I throw cuts in weird ways, apparently. Uh, like, like, they spin around and always like, we don't know where they're coming from, Felix. Stop it. I'm, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, isn't that what you want, though? Nah, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, they don't, you don't want them to They know. don't actually tell me not to, but it's been like... Unconventional. I want to know how to teach it. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Other ones could probably teach it better. Yeah, definitely. That's so cool, though. So have you actually gotten a sword fight with somebody? You think you could hold your own? Uh, if it's someone who doesn't know what they're doing, then certainly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about somebody that has d- taken the class three times? Uh, yeah, I could still do that. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, because you do it regularly. And is there always more that you can improve on with Oh, there's always more. Defensing? Yeah. It's, uh, like, medieval mindset would be that the manuscripts represent a kind of platonic truth. Mm. So, like, a platonic way of how you would do a martial art, but you always fail because it's Plato. <laughs> like, you know, um, it's basically forms, Neoplatonism, there's always a earthly form which fails to represent the ideal whatever. Right, right. Which is just life. Yeah. <laughs> That's just art in general. There's but, always an idea of what it should be, like comedy or fighting, whatever. You should do it a certain way. You'll never do it that way. You can always improve on it to get closer. Yeah, well, definitely. But I mean, especially within fencing and you're like reading the manuscript like then and there, like that's a lot different than... I mean, I can understand, like, what you mean with, like, translating it with comedy and, and other things like that. But, I mean, right there, you're reading the, the script, right? And you're, like, figuring it out at that in that moment, exactly how it's supposed to be. Yeah, but this idea how it should be, but it's not going to work that way. You know, you're not going to have an ideal situation where someone lets you do something in the yeah. perfect way. I mean, in the really perfect way, you just hit them the first time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the entire art of fencing is predicated on failing to hit them the first time oh really yeah you know you want to hit them in the head they die That's you go a, home yeah <laughs> everything else is like oh they stopped you now what <laughs> yeah. the first rule is you hit them again on the other side oh wow yeah it we're trying to yeah i tried to <clears throat> that's so cool i didn't know you did that yeah yeah so where are you at right now in that uh, like say, how many years have you been doing uh, that? let's see 
two-ish, two, almost three. Two, okay, so you're pretty, pretty deep in there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find, like, within, so, like, within stand-up, I found, like, you know, after a three-month period, I'd figure out, like, you know, I was doing a specific set, and then I wanted to change things up and, like, try a different style, and then, you know, moving forward, you know, six months in, I was like, well, what I was doing at the beginning wasn't that bad, you know what I mean? And, like, kind of going back and forth with the different ways that I wanted to write and, and different things like that. So do you find that with, uh, you know, with um, fencing at all? Yeah, you so if you go into ruts about certain yeah. ways you try to solve the problem, and then you go, well, I want to be more well-rounded. Mm-hmm. So in my case, I'm very gangly, mm. and I have a good sense of how far I have to be before I could hit them, mm. which just means I hit their hands a lot. Oh, okay. And I'm like always thinking I want to actually hit them properly, not just their hands. Yeah. Though hitting their hands is a completely valid strategy because sure. you hit them. Yeah, I mean, they'd probably drop their sword. Yeah. If was... But I still want to be more artful, so. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So is that what you're kind of right now working on with them? I mean, that's always what I'm trying to work on because I've gotten hand sniping to a bit of an art form. Okay. <laughs> You've worked that into your own little craft there. Well, it's a mi- yeah, it's a mixture of knowing exactly my distance and being tall. Yeah, yeah. Which is a massive advantage. Yeah, using your, yeah, the definitely your, your natural abilities to your advantage. Oh, yeah, height is uh, <laughs> OP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's even, I mean, so I rock climb, too. Within that, it's like, there's certain things that, like, short people, like, I can... Literally, like, a, something that's easy for me, just reaching up mm. and, like, grabbing into it. Somebody has to, like, work on it, you know, 50 different ways to figure out how they can jump in perfectly and not oh, yeah. fall on that one. Exact same issue is that if I'm fighting someone who's a foot short than me, mm-hmm. I could throw a cut from, like, six inches further away or something. And they have to come into where I can cut them Yeah. for them to cut me. Wow, so you probably have to, like, study all different types of opponents you might face and, like, judge their... Yeah, it's harder when I have to fight people who are taller than me, because yeah. I'm not used to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They just hit me on the head. <laughs> <laughs> sort of up, down, boop. Yeah, a little boop. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean... That, wow. But it's, it's a martial art, so you can do it all kinds of different ways. Some people are more slow and solid. People can knock me over, that's the other thing, though. Yeah. So they, if they can get in close, they can just push me out of the way mm-hmm. or if we're grappling I can get thrown over because I'm completely ethereal <laughs> I don't have much mass yeah yeah well and so then again how do you use that to your advantage around back yeah or compensating just make sure that they don't get to push me over true true are you a little bit more like agile a little bit uh, a bit a little bit with it yeah well yeah you are but the the, <laughs> the gangly side probably doesn't help with that as well yeah. Um, that's cool though. That's awesome. Yeah. What, what got you into that? Uh, I was, I was in Denmark and my DM did it, but I was always too busy to do it. And I did have the money to pay a deposit. So when I came to Philadelphia, I didn't know anybody. I just came because I could Could walk and could afford. Yeah. (laughs) There's not many places in this country where you don't need a car. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's basically what I'm in Philadelphia. Damn. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that's why I love Philly too. And then I thought, I need to meet people. Well, I'll just do this, because I've always wanted to. Yeah, pick up fencing. Yeah. You met a lot of people through that? Yeah, I have a good group of friends. Nice. They keep on saying, when can we see you do comedy? I said, you don't no. want to come to an open mic. <laughs> That's what, dude, everybody says that. Yeah, friends, if you try to date people, they go, they're always like, we want to see you. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> well, like, you might want to see me, but... Yeah. You don't want to come to two straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. You don't want to be. Uh, you want to stay out until two a.m. That would be fun. <laughs> or you could. You have to work, come at eight because you don't know when. Yeah. So <laughs> because you could accidentally be early. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Um, yeah. Well, that's really cool. Well, so it sounds like you've you know acclimated with your you know with the fencing and you know gotten it pretty deep into the stand up at this point. You think you're going to continue, you know, everything you're doing now for? A while? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. For, for a while. Nice. Yeah, do, you, do you have an idea of what your next steps would be? Um, it's sort of more of the same, but better. Mm, okay, just kind of working on improving those skills. Yeah. Um, you know, actually hitting the person in their body as opposed to their hands. Oh, yeah. Maybe maybe more props, maybe less props, we don't know. Uh, there's one more prop thing that I want to do at least, <laughs> which will be a bit daring. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Oh, and then uh, and then I do have to the honorable mention. 
you are alive and you felt completely fine after drinking raven water, yeah? Oh, yeah, I went on a date the next day. The next day? Yeah. And it went well? Uh, I thought it did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cool. I'm glad you're alive and didn't die from that. <laughs> and you did it for the name of comedy, dude. You know what? Name of comedy, but also now I've got a reputation as the <laughs> person who drank water <laughs> yeah. raven. True. It was, just like, it was just like roof water, dude. Yeah, it's it was not just even... roof water, but like as soon as they started... Going, someone has to drink this, and everyone's being a little bitch about it. Like, someone has to drink this. Yeah. Somebody's got to. Otherwise, it'd be... It's like that thing where, like, you're in elementary school or something, yeah. and everyone's going, like, oh my goodness, who's going to do this thing? Yeah. It's such a kerfuffle. It's like, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you were just like, all you people are just being I'm bitches. Punk. Yeah, you're punk as hell, dude. I'm, you just I'm the most punk person in the <laughs> I wear corduroy flares. <laughs> It's oh, more punk than that. Seriously, dude. Um, cool. Well, yeah. So I, um, I think that's pretty much all I got for you right now. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about or I wanted no, to say? No, not particular. Okay. Instagram is what Felix dot Bear. Uh, barely Felix, I think, but B E H R L Y Felix. Felix. Gotcha. All right, cool. Um, well, yeah, come out to Two Street. Come out to Raven. Come out to Gojo to see Raven. Oh, uh, yeah, Gojo. Gojo. <laughs> you probably don't want to come out to Gojo. <laughs> you hear that? Felix calling you all out for being little bitches out here, dude. <laughs> come on. He was just being that guy. He is that dude. So, thanks so much, Felix, for coming out here and telling us your side of things. And, uh... <laughs> Uh, I do appreciate it. Again, very good talking to you. Love seeing you out at the mics. Appreciate everybody listening. Follow me on Instagram if you want to. Or if you hate me, don't. It's fine. Anyways, I love you. Amen. Okay, bye. Penis, penis. Penis, penis. Penis, penis. Penis, penis, penis. Penis, penis. Penis, 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 penis. Penis, 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 penis. That was amazing. That was that was the exact structure of a sonnet. Yeah, I think so.